You may have seen the latest trailer for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, but what if I told you there was way more information hidden away for us to unpack? Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, yes today my friends, we're diving in and breaking down some brand new information about the game you most likely missed. To me, there's nothing more important than gameplay systems. No matter how pretty the graphics are or how new the world is, if the foundation isn't there, nothing will keep players coming back for more. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is destined to be built on the Borderlands platform. There's no denying that. But after scouring the internet, we've actually learned some pretty interesting new things about the game. First up is co-op. Much like Borderlands 3, it looks like players will be able to play with groups of up to four players online or utilize two-player split-screen on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and four-player split-screen on the Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. There are also two different modes groups can swap between depending on the nature of their party. Cooperation maintains loot for each individual player, also known as instance loot. This basically means no one can steal your drops. In cooperation, enemies will also scale to the individual player, which means everyone can actively participate in the game no matter their level. On the flip side of things, co op means that everyone sees the same loot drop, so if you're not fast, there's a fair chance your gear is going to get swiped. In this mode, enemies also scale to the host player, so if you're underleveled, you'll probably hit like a wet noodle and get one shot. Both modes have their pros and cons, but luckily, you can switch between them whenever you want with a simple menu option. I have been obsessed with this overworld concept since the first time we saw it in action. Playing as characters, playing a board game, playing as characters is just too much Inception for me to handle, but knowing there are substantial gameplay mechanics in that overworld just makes it all the more important to understand. According to the Wonderlands website, the overworld is an expansive map that connects the many hotspots of the Wonderlands. We've seen characters running from place to place, but I wanted to know what else the overworld had to offer. Well, a little more digging got me those answers. According to the website, if you dare to venture off the beaten path in the overworld, you can find all kinds of goodies, including extra chests full of gold, hidden collectibles like lucky dice and pieces of buff granting shrines, and even entirely optional areas with their own quest lines. The Gearbox team is really taking a multi-layered approach to this game, creating moments and opportunities on the three distinct levels within Wonderlands. I'm all about that. One of the most exciting things about Wonderlands is spellcasting and the ability to just hurl magic at enemies Borderlands style. We learned a few small pieces of information regarding these spells recently, including the fact that spells are separate from your character class's action skill. Any class can equip any spell that drops as a piece of loot, and because of the relatively low cooldown on all those spells, the team wants players to experiment by changing them out frequently. Spells might also have multiple charges, allow for continuous casting, or reset its cooldown because of a special circumstance like landing a crit. We've seen a number of spells in action, but it's all those special nuggets of information behind the spell that I'm really interested in, like what sort of status effects they can cause to enemies, or if there are utility spells that protect or buff allies. The answer, everything and more, according to the team. Spells have wildly varying properties, even when they're the same basic type, such as a fireball, magic missile, summoned hydra, or a gigantic meteor conjured from thin air to rain celestial destruction on your foes. Spells are easily one of the most talked about and anticipated features of the game, and with so much creative freedom to rethink the way players engage with high fantasy content, I have no problem believing Gearbox has plenty of magical surprises in store. While not exactly new information, I think it's important we double back and talk about melee combat once again. We covered it a number of times in our other videos, especially when new information was first surfaced about that system, but in case you didn't catch any of those videos, let's get everyone on the same page. Melee combat isn't going to be your primary source of damage, at least that's not how the devs intended it to be used. Players will be able to slot a dedicated melee weapon and will collect them just like they do any other piece of loot within the game. These melee weapons will also have effects and synergies that enhance your entire build. Some weapons will give your melee attacks the ability to reduce cooldowns or refund ammo for your guns, just to name two of the examples the developers used. Melee attacks can also be used individually by tapping the melee button once or chained together by tapping the button repeatedly. 
Finally, as showcased in the first gameplay trailer, you can reach enemies that are slightly out of range by utilizing a heroic leap glide that will move you into range of the enemies before the attack. While it may all seem pretty straightforward, what's clear to me is that melee combat is going to be an integral part of the action. Sure, you can choose to ignore it, but the players that lean into melee and use it as intended may find that they gain the most for engaging with that system. All right, let's talk guns. There are six major types in the game. Pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, and heavy weapons. I don't think I really need to break that down any further, but if you'd like me to explain to you what an SMG is, you can always message me in our Discord. What I find more interesting than the actual weapon types themselves are the manufacturers that are creating the guns in Wonderlands. Some names will sound familiar, like Dahlia, Torg, and Hyperius, but there are a number of other manufacturers making their debut in the game, including Skulldugger. Through some form of arcane trickery, Skulldugger guns never need to be reloaded as they continuously regenerate their own ammo supply from the Aether. But magic has its limits, so you can't fire forever. Eventually, you'll need to lay off the trigger and let these cool off a bit, lest they overheat. Another manufacturer is Stoker. With the absurdly high fire rate of Stoker guns, you'll quit worrying and surrender yourself to the steady stream of slaying. All that rapid fire chews through ammo in a hurry, so make sure you're well stocked before you gleefully hold down the trigger. There's also Furiori. Don't settle for inferior weapons. With a small dose of polymorphing magic, Furiori guns can take on new forms as you fling them across the battlefield like winged blasters and bouncing bombs. Moments later, they'll reappear in your hands ready to unload all over again. Finally, we have Black Powder. If you're a crack shot looking to aerate some skeleton skulls, pick yourself up a Black Powder gun. Critical hits will cause your bullets to ricochet, damaging a nearby enemy as a bonus. Black Powder pistols can also unload just as fast as you can pull the trigger, so get the squeeze in. There's a healthy mix of old and new, and as we've already seen from the various trailers, the guns are still the centerpiece of the action. Wards are the new shields in Wonderlands, and while they have a fancy new name, they function pretty much as they did in Borderlands 3, providing you with an overshield that protects your health pool with different manufacturers providing you with varying benefits. The first manufacturer is Ashen. Ashen wards are quick to recharge when broken, so you can duck in and out of combat without fear of mortal injuries. The trade-off for this rapid recharging is a lower max capacity, so don't assume you'll survive should you decide to waltz in the midst of an enemy horde. There's also Pan Goblin. The tinkerers at Pan Goblin like to make wards with boosted shield capacity, so you can laugh in the enemy's face as they fruitlessly try to stab you to death. But you may want to run and hide if and when your ward breaks, as it'll take longer to recharge. Finally, our friends at Hyperius are also getting in on the ward game. Hyperius wards offer bonuses when you've kept your shield in pristine condition. For example, they might deliver a crackling electric shock to the first enemy who strikes you, or empower the first shot from your gun with increased damage at the cost of some of your ward's energy. Every good LARPer needs a shield, and while this system won't shock or awe any Borderlands fans, it's still a chunk of new information you need to know about. New to the Borderlands universe are rings and amulets. And yes, this is just more gear that provides more stats and benefits, but I mean, when have we ever complained about getting more gear in our games? All jewelry is made by the Vatu manufacturer, and once the players have completed the corresponding quests, can equip up to two rings and an amulet. According to the developers, rings typically provide flat boosts to your loadout, like increases to action skill duration, damage or magazine side for a given gun type, companion damage, and so on. Amulets, on the other hand, are more likely to grant special effects, like a chance to instantly reload your equipped gun's ammo after a melee hit. They can also increase things like class power and damage, whether that's all your damage across the board, or more specific avenues like gun or status effect damage. If you're someone that obsesses over character builds in video games, amulets and rings provide yet another layer to that process, giving you vastly more to consider, but making you all the more powerful in the process. Finally, I want to talk about damage types, a staple in any high fantasy game, but doubly important in a game that features millions of weapon combinations and spells. There are five elemental damage types in Wonderlands, fire, frost, lightning, poison, and dark magic, and each type is designed to deal with a different type of enemy. Fire burns flesh, red health bars, lightning zaps wards, blue health bars, poison seeps through armor, yellow health bars, frost chills bones, white health bars, this also has an interesting compounding effect that can eventually freeze enemies solid, making them take triple the amount of melee damage, 
and Dark Magic siphons enemy life, transferring it to you. All five elemental damage types also deal some sort of damage over time effect, also known as dots. We've already covered a lot, but I thought we'd end with one more nugget of newness from the Wonderland's Twitter page, legendary weapons. We all love hunting them down, and it looks like the Gearbox team is taking the old sword in the stone idea and making it work in the Borderlands sandbox. That's right, the gun in the stone is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the legendary weapons that we'll be hunting down at some point in Wonderlands. It's hard to tell for certain, but the weapon looks like a shotgun, or at the very least an elephant rifle with a beefy scope and a sword blade integrated into the barrel. So who knows, maybe this is some sort of ranged weapon that also slots as a melee weapon for some awesome added benefits. Nonetheless, I'm extremely pumped to track this thing down and test it out for myself when the time is right. So while many creators covered the trailers, we wanted to take you a step further, covering huge new details about the game, and more importantly, the systems that power the world of Wonderlands. If you guys appreciate videos that get straight to the point and don't waste your time, we would love your support. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more awesome Wonderlands content in your feeds. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We'll be opening up a special section just for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So if you're looking for a great community to interact with, check out the link in the description below. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you'll want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.